Welcome to Old Iron Machine Works. This video will be a little continuation video from the last one. Um, the engine that you've seen on the trailer in the last video, this is when it came in. It's all uh, sealed up and it went into that container until it was ready to go out. Uh, here we're at the morning of getting it loaded up to go out the site to, uh, to get swapped. This engine here was the second engine that uh, we were involved in swapping out and I believe that we have about four more that we have to uh, swap out over the next few months and um, you know this is just showing uh, they put all new uh, muffler all new exhaust system on it it's a reman engine uh, it comes from Austria for the Yenbachers here I'm just getting everything uh, getting the tarp and everything off uh, so the crank can uh, lift it up out of there and set it onto the truck. I try to edit the uh, sound noise, the wind noise down as much as possible. Cause all my videos are done on an old iPhone 6 and one thing about Rio Vista, California, it's known for its wind that's why as far as you can see there are the big windmills uh, they definitely take advantage of the uh, wind in Rio Vista Here an old school buddy and friend is moving one of his old cranes in order to lift the engine. I think this particular uh, conventional crane was one his dad had. I think he was saying it was like 1972, but the nice thing is with this crane, we just keep it right on the, uh, the lot. It just stays in our yard until we're done, uh, done with the engine swap, so it works out nice. In my last video, I showed uh, putting some hubs on gearboxes that I rebuild. Uh, the gearboxes that I rebuild are ICOS. These particular gearboxes I do not rebuild, and they're Eisenbeis. These ones are made in Austria. The ones that I rebuild are made in Germany. Here I'm just heating it up, checking the temp, and getting ready to slide it on. They're just an interference fit. As far as the depth of the hubs, these are pretty much like the ones I rebuild. The top hub just goes up against the shoulder, so you just take it all the way in. And then the bottom ones, I have a little jig that I bolt to it that sets the depth. I was just showing these because I was going to point out, these are a weldment style gearbox. And a weldment means that these are just flame cut sheet steel all welded together where the gearboxes that I build are cast iron gearbox housings and you can see the flame cut there that's just those bottoms you, they just whatever thickness material they need they just cut it out and weld it up now this is the style that I rebuild it's your typical cast iron housings where they use a mold and you know pour cast iron and machine them now the weld mounts are way stronger than a cast iron not that they need it we don't you know in this application you know where there's no problem in it strength wise but but the weldments are definitely a much stronger unit if you watch many of my videos you would know i'm pretty much lost without the big glass bead cabinet i love the glass bead cabinets they just uh really nice for cleaning parts up Oh, 
here I just bolting up the stop plate so when I slide the hub on I just go all the way up against the stop and you'll see a little piece of wire the only difference in these particular gearboxes uh, I forget how thick the shim is but I just put a shim right on the plate put a piece of wire on it that way I don't have I don't have to readjust the jam nuts on the tool cell and then slide her on and on. wait for it to cool off and this gearbox is ready to go out it'll just set right up on the front part of the deck of the trailer and it'll be delivered with the revan engine another modification i need to do for this engine swap is i need to cut off these feet this frame they had the frames made to hold the engine and the frames are upside down right now and they were actually too wide what they're going to do, the two gantry cranes that I'm going to show next, modifying, they'll be able to pick the engines straight up and then slide the engine over and then set them on this frame and then pull them out the building. And with the feet, they thought, thought they were just going to be too wide. Here I'm using one of the Invisigards, um, you know, on my uh, cutoff wheel. I'll try to remember to put a link uh, down below. One down, seven to go. The customer wanted the nicest cut he could get on him because these were quite expensive and they were powder coated afterwards. Um, you know, so torch was kind of out, plasma was out, uh, bandsaw was out. I get the best cut, you know, with, with the zip wheel. And then here I'm just painting it and painting the end with some grabber green. All right, that brings us to the gantry cranes. Uh, we purchased two 10-ton gantry cranes to do the engine swaps. The only problem is they needed to be totally installed before we moved them into the building, and they needed to go in a 10-foot high door, or slightly, slightly lower than 10 foot, which meant I had to uh, modify and cut them down. We decided with the beam a half inch off the ground with the pin in it, and here I'm laying out the holes for the locking pin. When the pin's locked in, it'll be half inch off the ground, and it should have right about an inch clearance to slide in, uh, in the building under the door opening. Right here, we ended up taking five inches off. Now on these gantry cranes, they have a cable come along on each side to raise and lower where you just kind of, you know, together if possible, crank them up and down. And um, we could have used the cables to hold it barely off the ground, but the customer wanted to go ahead and drill holes uh, so they can have the pin engaged and locked in. And what the customer wants, the customer gets. So here I'm just making up a simple little gauge when you got this tubing with the big radius corner, um, you know, you can get a tri-square out there and, or a little combination square, but I just normally take a piece of metal like that that already fits that radius, you know, and then I just uh, measure it out, put a mark on it, and then once I set it up on there, um, here I'm just measuring the length, finding the, the length of the hole, and then I'll mark it. And then I'll take the little gauge that I make, and then I'll just lay it right up there. Go ahead and mark it, and you'll see the mark where it's just slightly a little on the long side. You know, in this tubing, I mean, it's nothing precision. So I'll just put a little mark there, turn it around. You know, go ahead and mark the other 
And regardless if it's long or short, really doesn't make a difference. When you do your center punch, you're just going to split the difference anyway. You know, so you just go dead center, you know, with your center punch mark and you're good to go. Anytime I'm center punched and I just do a really light light and, and then I just kind of uh, correct if I need to move it one way or another. You know, I just kind of correct over a little bit. and Once I got it where it looks good, just give it a nice straight down uh, whack with the hammer. I work in a shop where it's kind of like make do with what we got. And here's an annular cutter that I ordered. Uh, from McMaster Car. It's an inch and nine sixteen, so the only thing that they had was carbide tipped. And then I got the uh the guide, the plunger, I'm not sure what I forget what they call that, but it's the part that knocks the uh the little slug out and it goes into a special drill. And in this application I'm gonna put it in our Milwaukee Mag drill. So I'm gonna cut that out and make a little modification. I want to make something with a spring that will hold everything center until I get down, you know, a little bit into the metal, and then I'll remove that. And then at that point, the cutter itself will be its own pilot. Here, that little sleeve I'm uh, silver soldering right to the shaft is actually a guide ring on one of the compressor valves, and it was already perfect size hole. Um, I'm kind of getting a little low on some silver solder, so as you can see I'm using the tweezers and uh, getting every little last bit. Well, there's my first cut. It actually uh, worked really well, but I did not put any oil or any kind of uh, cutting fluid on the center. Yeah. And I thought the center was going to be a little bit harder than it was. Um, don't know, maybe silver solder and lot, you know, soften it up a little bit. But, but anyway, it, um, it did a great job, and I don't have too many holes I have to drill out, and I'll probably never use the darn thing again. But that stiff spring will just keep some good pressure on the tip until I get the cutter, you know, kind of about halfway through. And uh, since the spring was so stiff, you know, then I go ahead and take it out. And then by then the cutter's, you know, just seems its own groove for its pilot. I just took a little screwdriver and just kind of tapped it, you know, back and forth, you know, to drop the slug out. And yeah, it came came out real easy. It just wouldn't seem right if I didn't get to use some old dirty rusted iron somewhere in one of my projects. And here it just so happens that I found some old I-beam that'll work nice. Since I cut five inches off, 
when this thing is in the receiver and all the way to the highest height, this slides in the bottom and you hook a come along to it. And at the highest height with the pin in, there was one inch sticking down, so it actually worked out really good. Well, now that I've cut off five inches, I need something else to replace that. So when you put the come along on and pull it up, it'll suck that up into the pocket and be able to get the, the pin locked in. And that's where that I-beam actually uh, is going to work perfect. It slides in really nice and it'll slide in about halfway. And then from right there, I'll just weld a little key stock right there to keep it from sliding up any farther. And then I'll just come on the bottom. I just need a plate in order to hook the come along to. And here's where some good old Kubota three-point arms. Uh, I've already cut the wobble the, uh, off the end of the three-point arms for one of my own personal projects. And then here I'm just drilling the hole out bigger where I can put a little eye ring on it to hook the hook on the come along. Since these are work related projects, sometimes I, you know, I try not to be getting the phone out and filming everything. I did not get anything showing them done, uh, but I just ran a grinder around them, smoothed, smoothed things out, knocked off some dingleberries. Blasted them and uh, put some good primer on them. And here we're just sliding it, sliding in, making sure the pins lock. Um, once they are in the correct position, when they're standing up, the bottom of those center posts, the adjustable posts, are only a half inch off the ground. Here, got the boss all loaded up, and the boss and one of our other mechanics spent actually a whole week uh, on site working on this project. And here it's showing the uh, gantry cranes sliding into the building with about an inch to spare. And this is some of the rigging crew, um, you know, that are involved in just getting the engines pulled out. You can see the frame on the right that I chopped off. What they do is pick the engine up, slide them over, set it down on that other frame, and then at that point, then they just drag it out of the building. And in here, you'll just, you know, see them kind of inching it out and dragging it out and loading it up uh, to come back to the yard. These particular engines here are right around 25,000 pounds. And here, I'll, uh, this is the old engine back at the yard. And we'll offload it until it's time to ship to the Bay Area to send the engine back off to Austria for another remand. Um, here's on site, they're swapping out the muffler. Uh, this muffler uh, was cracking, you know, pretty much all the way around. Um, so it's time to swap it out. They actually shipped both gantries back uh, without taking them apart. They just put them on a low bed uh, trailer and um, they came to the yard and I just unloaded them with the forklift. Uh, this here shows a little bit better picture of the locking pin that locks everything into position. And um, so now we just got to figure out where we're going to be storing these until the next uh, next engine swap. I want to thank my new subscribers. 
And anybody that's uh, also new to any of my videos, if you like this kind of content, uh, hit the subscribe button and give me a thumbs up. Always appreciated. Until the next time, thanks for watching.